So here's a cool video idea that I had. So I just turned 18 in September, so I will be voting in this midterm uh, election that's on November 6th, and I'm in California. So what I thought I'd do is give a rundown of how I'm going to vote and how I think you should vote, obviously, uh, for all the propositions within the state. Uh, because obviously there's these are statewide ballot initiatives. And upon researching, I realized that to truly be educated on these uh, ballot initiatives, you really have to research a lot. And so I've done that research and hopefully I'll be able to relay the information to you guys, obviously from my point of view, and let you guys know how you guys should vote. So, Proposition 1. It authorizes bonds to fund specified housing assistance programs. Vote yes. Proposition 2. Authorizes bonds to fund existing house program for individuals with mental illness. Of course, vote yes. Proposition 3. Authorizes bonds to fund projects for water supply and quality, watershed, fish, wildlife, water conveyance, and groundwater sustainability and storage. Vote yes. Proposition 4. Authorizes bonds funding construction at hospitals providing children's health care. Vote yes. All right. So those ones are very easy. They're very simple. They're very straightforward, right? Uh, vote yes on one through four. Now, here is where we start to get to the tricky parts. So, Proposition 5. It's This is the rundown. It says, changes requirements for certain property owners to transfer their property tax base to replacement property. So this is something that is, uh, to read the summary, it says a yes vote would allow home buyers who are older than 55 severely disabled or who have contaminated or disaster destroyed property to transfer their tax assessments from their old home to their new home, no matter the value of the new home its location, or how many times the buyer has moved. Current law allows only eligible buyers to transfer a tax assessment if their new home is of equal or lesser value of their old home and only once per lifetime. So this is interesting, right? So here are the, here are the major backers. The backers are the California Association of Realtors. They argue this could take away the fear of seniors who wish to downsize their homes by selling larger homes and buying smaller ones. This is, and here's, here's an important impact on taxpayers. It says, this could cause local governments and schools to lose $150 million in annual property taxes and eventually up to $1 billion per year which are estimates based on 2018 value of the dollar. Now, that's a crap ton of property taxes. And what do property taxes fund? Schools, public schools. Are public schools extremely, 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 extremely important? Yes, 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 they are. But here's the thing. So basically what this, this proposition will do is it will basically make it so that the property taxes for these people who are older than 55 because they have these homes that they bought because they're old now they were so cheap when they bought them so when they sell that house and then buy a new one their property tax will be up because their house will be worth a lot they'll buy a house for a lot more and this will make it so that those people are essentially incentivized to buy more expensive and new and more importantly newer houses but and this is framed as this idea of helping old people but that's actually not really what this is doing and this would be supported by some sort of a uh you know senior group or of some sort some senior advocacy group um and the people opposing it are the california teachers association but here's the thing why would the California Association of Realtors support this and sponsor this? The reason why they're sponsoring this is because if this are, is to happen, what it will do is it will spur more commission money because, first of all, more homes will be purchased. But second of all, you're talking about uh, them being incentivized to buy more expensive homes. 
So what we're talking about here is a fake and a facade of helping old people when really they don't have any issue paying the property tax because they're going to sell a house that's worth a crap ton of money now that they bought for super cheap because they bought it so long ago. So they're not going to have an issue with the property tax. And this is sort of this fake wrapped in that when really what it is, is it's an attempt to the, the sad situation about uh, housing in the United States is instead of it really being focused on as this sort of thing that is essential for life, we have a culture where it's like, oh, we got to invest in real estate. You know, there's a whole fucking, you know, peep market of people whose job it is to purchase homes and then sell it for more. And it's just, it's convoluted this entire thing. So these people are trying to lie to the California Association of Realtors because they're trying to make more money through commission sales because more homes will be bought and uh, that will result, and they'll be very expensive homes, by the way. And so that will spur uh, commission costs. So that's the reason why they are supporting that if you're wondering why they were supporting that. So on that proposition, on Proposition 5, vote no because the schools will lose a crap ton of funding and this is a fake and a fraud. Um, okay, so that's five. Vote no on five. Vote, uh, sorry, Proposition 6. This one here, I'm going to read this to you guys. Proposition 6, it says, Eliminate certain road repair and transportation funding. Require certain fuel taxes and vehicle fees be approved by the electorate. Uh, so here's a summary. It says, a yes vote would repeal 2017 increases to fuel taxes and vehicle fees, including the Road Repair and Accountability Act. It would also require voter approval for California lawmakers to impose increase or extend fuel taxes or vehicle fees in the future. Uh, it says, currently, raising fuel taxes and vehicle fees requires a two-thirds vote of both the State Assembly and Senate. Gasoline tax taxes increased by 0.12 per gallon in January 2018. So uh, the major backers of this are the California Republican Party. And the opponents are pretty much all the Democratic, Jerry Brown, and just a bunch of different people. So what the impact will be is this past year, Proposition 6 will reduce California's tax revenues by an estimated $2.9 billion in 2018-19 and $4.9 billion in 2020-21. This means less money to spend on repairing state highways, local streets, and mass transit. Vote no on Proposition 6. Vote no because what it's doing is basically the gas tax and the, and the vehicle fee, the uh, I believe it's like the licensing fee, what they're using that money for is whenever you see work on transportation and on roads and different things like that, like road repairs and their cow transit and different, different transportation services. Those are being funded by the gas taxes and infrastructure is extremely important. And I'm down to pay a couple extra, however much it is, uh, you know, a hundred or so, or a couple hundred a year for serious, real infrastructure because it spurs tax dollars through having more jobs. And obviously, I want nice roads. I don't want roads that are, you know, it destroyed where there's potholes and, and different things like that and freeways. I want I want repaired roads. And also, it goes towards working towards making transportation. So definitely vote no on California Proposition 6. Vote no infrastructure is super important honestly infrastructure is what makes california amazing in the first place so vote no on proposition six that's a no on five and six now proposition seven i'm just going to kind of break this down it'll it'll basically make it so that daylight saving becomes the normal time i'm gonna vote yes but honestly i don't really care what you what you decide on that i'm not really that uh all that crazy about it uh so i'm gonna vote yes but i mean honestly it really doesn't matter what you vote on that prop eight this one regulates amounts uh, outpatient kidney dialysis clinics charge for dialysis treatment. So here is uh, what's going on. So the summary here says a yes vote supports requiring kidney dialysis clinics to refund to patients or their insurance providers any revenue above 115% of the cost of direct pat patent care and healthcare improvements. Backers believe it would incentivize clinics to invest in facility improvements and worker training. Uh, 
To some analysts, see Prop 8 is the latest fight in the battle for the SEIU to unionize workers at California's two largest dialysis providers, DeVita and Fresnius Medical Care. So he, who are the major backers of this? The major backers of this are the California Public Employees Retirement System, California Labor Federation, United Health Workers West. Who are the opponents? Pretty obvious, right? California Medical Association, National Kidney Foundation, DeVita Dialysis. So the impact to taxpayers is state and local governments could save millions per year and reduce patient care costs. State could face a higher cost of ensuring compliance with the law. This could be offset by higher licensing fees. So state and local governments could save millions per year in reduced patient care costs. So I, I think this is essentially a way to make it so that dialysis is cheaper for the people and seems like the labor uh you know the labor groups are in favor of this and it seems that the people who are riding on losing this money are the you know the companies who are doing this you know the dialysis um clinics so i i definitely i 100 percent uh approve of this i think we should pass proposition eight uh i think it will also uh, embedder the facilities as well and so I th say vote yes on Proposition 8. Now, Proposition 9 doesn't exist because it was removed from the Supreme Court of California. This would have been the one that divided California into three separate states. Insanity. I know. <laughs> I know. Trust me. So this one is super, super confusing. Uh, this is why I mentioned in the beginning that it's pretty much impossible to really understand all of the propositions without deep research. And so what ends up dictating whether or not a proposition actually gets passed is usually the advertisements. Uh, so this one is Proposition 11. It says, <clears throat> requires private sector emergency ambulance employees to remain on call during work breaks. Eliminates, uh, eliminates certain employer liability initiative statutes. So summary says, a yes vote allows ambulance service providers to require their employees to remain on call while taking breaks. Employees will be paid at their regular pay rate during their breaks. Uh, backers say it could potentially reduce ambulance response times to life-threatening emergencies by allowing crews to be routed to a nearby call even if they are on break. Uh, so this is super misleading. I did a lot of research into this. And apparently this is already, like, this already is what happens. It is the case that basically... Even if they're on break, whichever is the nearest uh, unit that is emergency, they have to actually respond. It's just that when they do that, they, they're they required to be paid for, uh, I think, an hour of their base pay rate by, that, by EMRs who pays them. So it's misleading because it's like, that's already, that's already what's going on. So the backers of this is the American Medical Response. It's a major private ambulance operator that contracts with several cities and counties statewide. A major opponent is California Teachers Association. Now, the impact to taxpayers. It says backers believe local governments will save tens of millions of dollars each year by lowering the cost of emergency ambulance costs. By keeping the current rules in place, some agencies may have, have to hire additional staffing to make sure all employees uh, receive required breaks. So they donated AMR the American medical response has funneled in 22 million into the yes, uh, into the yes of this. And the reason is, is because there is this lawsuit, this pending lawsuit that just got, I, my understanding of the situation is like a district court ruled that they can do a class action lawsuit. I think it was four people. And this lawsuit would be like cost them like a hundred million dollars or something like that. And so the literal part of Proposition 11 literally removes liability uh, from 2017 of October and prior, which would include that. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to save themselves this money. And the reason that that class action lawsuit was happening was because they were alleging against them for not properly compensating them. For their uh, for the breaks that they actually missed, so definitely definitely vote no on this because what's happening is they are the American Medical Response is trying to fuck over the actual workers um, by not providing them for their for their actual compensation. 
So definitely vote no on this. They are trying to fuck their own employees out. But unfortunately, due to the shoddy wording, I think that it looks like it's going to end up getting voted in, which is unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Um, it's really, really tough. So uh, the the Proposition 12, you can feel free to vote how you want to. This one says, establish, establishes new standards for confinement of specific farm animals, ban sale of non-complying products. Um, this one, you can sort of vote sort of vote however you want it says uh, a yes vote would ban sale of meat and eggs produced from animals that are kept in areas below a specified number of square feet um, I'm sure you guys are going to have your own opinion on that to be honest I'm not 100% decided but the rest of them just to do a little bit of a quick rundown 1 through 4 vote yes uh, 5 five through 7 or sorry 5 through 6 is a no 7 is a yes for me Eight is also a yes. Uh, ten is yes. I forgot to go over ten, actually. Ten, yes. And then eleven, no. And then twelve, however you want. So that is my breakdown of the California propositions.